Okay, thank you. So, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Cabinet meeting. It's now 7pm, and I'd like to start the meeting. I'm Councillor Andrew Jeffries. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting is being live-streamed and recorded for the publication on the Council's website. Item 1 is apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Johnson, and I don't believe there's any other apologies uh, to come in. Item 2, I move that the minutes of the Cabinet meeting minutes of the 21st of February 2024 to be approved as a correct record. Are there any comments on the accuracy of the minutes? No, so do I have approval for those minutes? Thank you. Um, item three, I've not agreed to any urgent items of business. Item four, does any member have uh, any declaration of interest to make? No, okay, so moving on to item five, statement of, from the leader. Um, I first want to comment on the um, recent story concerning um, the council starting legal action to try and recover losses incurred with our dealings with Liam Kavanagh. That is true, we have started legal proceedings. Um, these are, I should, should you know, let residents know that these proceedings will take a long time, that they're not something that will be a quick fix. Um, it's not the council's intention to give a running commentary um, because we don't wish to um, hold these proceedings up, but to assure residents that when we have got information that they should um, be told as soon as possible. As many of you be aware, since our last cabinet, Thurrock Council passed its annual budget. Many hard decisions had to be made to secure a budget, but we were able to maintain our libraries and our school crossing patrols, as well as other frontline services, which matter to most of our residents. Although we had to make hard decisions, we are committed to making the best decision for the future of Thurrock. I was delighted that the Minister of State for Local Government has welcomed the progress that's been made by the Council in our efforts to return financial stability. We will continue to build on what our hard work and will continue to tackle the Council's challenges ahead. On a disappointing note, um, the Gravesend to Tilbury Ferry service will actually be paused for a short period of time. Um, the uh, present contractors have decided not to continue with the service. I want to reassure everyone that we, Thurrock Council, are doing everything possible to secure um, an alternative service. We are talking to um, lots of people about providing this service. And as I said, I'm absolutely committed to securing the long-term future of the ferry. And we'll, we will be working very hard to secure this. On Friday, we celebrated International Women's Day. The Deputy Leader for the Council, Councillor Deborah Arnold, hosted an event at the Town Hall for local artists, uh, business leaders, council and elected officials. Um, I was delighted to be the only man in the room, the token man in the room, but there was a really interesting talk by um, a local artist called Jackie Burns, and I would urge anyone that's interested in space and art to actually um, take a look at um, her work. It really is, really is interesting. Uh, sounded out of space. That sounded out of space, yeah. yeah. Um, finally, um, I'd like to welcome the return of Corringham Post Office, which one of our members of Parliament, um, Stephen Metcalf, reopened. This will provide the community with a much needed post office, and I'm sure the return of the post office has been welcomed by all in the local community. Um, item six, briefings on policy budgets and other issues. Councillor Carter. Thank you, Leader. I'll keep this very quick, but we had some very positive news in education. Um, so, um, Olive Academy had made an application uh, for a new free school, and in the budget this year, this was, Farrakh was one of the places granted um, a new school, and uh, we look forward to working with them to provide this. And it's very fantastic news, and they do amazing work at the Olive Academy. I've visited it about a month ago, and it truly is a fantastic place. Um, thank you, Councillor Carter. That's really good news. Thank you for, for, for informing us all. Um, item 7, I've not received any petitions from members of the public. Item 8, I have received a question from Councillor Redsill, who has joined us here this evening. Councillor Redsill, would you like to, for, for those that don't know, read out your question, please? W would you like to read out your question, your first question? Thank you, Leader. Cheers. 
Um, question one. The HRA report shows an agreed budget for the Black Shots development of just over 1.1 million. Can the Cabinet member, and I know he's not here, but can the member outline what this money is for? Thank you, Councillor Redsill. Firstly, can I apologise on behalf of Councillor Johnson, who sends his apologies not being able to answer the, the question for you. So I have got an answer, and I will read it out. If you do have a supplementary, I have Evelina here to be able to answer any supplementaries. So in answer to your first question, um, the budget information is based on the allocation of 1.1 million for the current financial year 23-24 for the Black Shots housing development. We are projecting to have spent 324K in the current financial year. These costs are for the tenants decant from the blocks and the leaseholder repurch and the leaseholders repurchases. There is the, the balance of that budget will go into the um, following years. And for your information, 24-25, there is 5.6 million, 25-26, there's 5.1 million, and 26-27 there is 33 million. All of this money will be used for decanting tenants and for uh, repurchasing from leaseholders. Thank you, Leader. Um, my supplementary is, as you know, all this, this application is looking to use very valued Greenbelt land with a proposed swap. My residents are vehemently against this um, and any of this money to be spent on, can any of this money be spent on correcting this I want the whole community to back the project that is going on at the moment, but I, I'm divided at the moment in my ward as people are, you know, and have come forward really in great numbers now. So it's, it's taking on more, probably um, a bit more than I thought it would. But, um, and also I'd like to say that I'm not backing the use of that little bit of green belt anyway. Thank you for that. Um, thank you, Councillor Rector. Before I ask, um, um, Evelyn, to come in, I, I'd just like to pick up on your comment about backing the project. I think it's so important that you know, ward councillors, the cabinet, um, every member, every resident backs this project. Because we are an intervention, we are having to go to um, government to ask permission to borrow the money. And I think it's really important that we say to government, look, we're united. We want to see this project going forward. So, you know, totally endorse your um, comments about everyone backing the project. Evelina, would you like to answer the question? Uh, thank you, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Retzel. Um, just on the technical point of the budget, the, the, the budget allocation is um, uh, at the moment based on the business case um, that will obviously be outlined later uh, this evening, but it assumes that we actually build within the red line that was agreed in Cabinet last, last year in March uh, 2023. Um, sorry. Um, thank you, Evelina. And I believe you have a second question for us, Councillor Redsill. Thank you, Leader. In regard to the £40 million plus budget for this project, can the Cabinet member, who is not here, sorry again, reassure me we are doing everything to maximise this opportunity and are working with housing associations or developers to ensure we are not ending up with the ECOs debacle that we had with the flats that cost nearly as twice as much of buying privately? Um, thank you, Councillor Redsill. So I, ha I have got an answer here, and again, Evelina is here for, for, to answer any supplementaries. Um, what I would say is that um, before, this, before this was started, there was a full business case put together, and um, we looked at the possibility of using both um, um, housing associations and other um, organisations like pension funds, etc. So every possible... Um, uh, um, option was explored and looked at and I believe you have seen the paperwork for all of that and there, there is two sets of paperwork one that's that's gone out publicly one that's not public because it's got some uh, confidential figures involved in there so we did do everything possible but it was finally determined that we were the best people to deliver this project happy to take a supplementary thank you leader yeah I know all that and it's it's we're not against the project we're just against the little bit of green belt that we're using um a little bit of green belt has been found somewhere else but it's nowhere near anything so it's it's really out of the way it's not really it's not really the right place for it to be um in the north grays plan which I've read a lot of lately um and a recent and at a recent ONS mentioned 500 homes option 
um, which could include an area of land which is called the Ron Evans Field that is just has been used lately for antisocial behaviour. So there's nothing on it at all. It's just scrubland. Um, I just wanted to be reassured that this might be a win-win situation and should not be dismissed because we, I would like it noted that I, I've got to be with my residents because that's what they feel at the moment. Um, I just want to say that we, we should look at that because if we can build 500 on that piece of land, I know North Grays was looked at years ago to build more houses on. Um, I think we, we could do that and we could, it could be good for us. We could have a win-win situation here. We could do more and not just the few that we are doing now with the hundred extras that they want. Um, in this instance, I think we should be looking at all the other options. And I think we're, me personally, I'm falling short for my residents because this is how they feel. This is only a tiny little bit of green belt, but it's the edge. All they're worried about is this is not the finish of it. They will take some more or we will take some more. Um, so I just wanted you to know that I am, I will fight it. Um, the only place I can really fight this is planning, which won't be till next year. But I'm not against the development, and Evelina knows that, that we've had a talk on Monday or Tuesday evening, and it's not the development, and it's not what we're doing. It's that tiny little bit of green belt where Councillor Maney and I have put tennis courts on there, and now they want to be shifted and use that bit of land. So that's really... Thank you very much. OK, thank you. So before I ask Evelina to come in and, and, and answer the question, I just want to say out there loud and clear, I don't think any of your residents could be any doubt that you're a fighter for them. Um, you've, you've always been a fighter and you'll continue to be a fighter. And you're here tonight putting forward the, the, the thoughts um, that you've got and your residents. So you should be in no doubt people do appreciate what you do. Evelina. Thank you. And I would absolutely um, echo that. And I think we, we're working uh, very well on the ground with, with um, Councillor Retzel yourself and the, um, Councillor Maney. Uh, we just wanted to um, say uh, and confirm that we have looked at all of the potential alternative sites uh, suggested by Councillor Retzel uh, and also recently looked into that uh, uh, site that is absolutely uh, indicated in the, in the local proposals to, you know, uh, um, as part of the sort of consideration for the future local plan. Um, that particular site is not in council's um, ownership as well, but um, just really to say that we have looked at the potential um, uh, alternative um, options there. And um, just on that um, bit of uh, uh, green belt that is now within the, the red line, that um, bit of land is also now part of the future proposed local plan as a sort of um, area for, for development of new homes. Thank you, Evelina. Go on, Kat. As it's you, Councillor no, Edson. Oh, you know me. I, I won't um, do what's not, you know, right and proper. Um, but the Ron Evans Field, the piece of land, that it, is it in our it is our land? It's not anybody else's. It belongs to our council. It is our, our land. So I'm going to have to take this away because my latest advice is that it is not within our ownership, but there could be only one right answer. So I'll absolutely take that away and, and ensure it's issued through Councillor Johnson. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll let Councillor Redsill um, have an answer. Thank you, Councillor Redsill. It's entire, you, you can stay where you are if you like. Yeah, OK. Um, so... Uh, Item 9, I'm not aware of any matters referred to Cabinet for consideration by overroom scrutiny committees. Item 10, delegated decisions taken since the last meeting. There's been one delegated decision taken on the 12th of February 2024 regarding the Freeport Memorandum of Understanding, and this is exempt. So does that mean it's not published on the website? Yes, thank you. Um, item 11, update on procurement of strategic delivery partner for housing work. Again, as Councillor Johnson's unable to attend this evening, Evelina, I believe you're introducing the report. That's right. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, so this is uh, a regular monthly update report that we present into Cabinet um, to inform you and appraise you of the procurement of housing strategic delivery partner. Um, so since the last meeting, the first stage of the procurement process, which was the selection questionnaire stage, has completed. 
Um, uh, we were very um, happy to have received five uh, submissions and we are currently evaluating it. So as things stand, uh, we are on track with um, the outline timescale. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any member wishing to comment or question on this? No, so we should go to the recommendations. Recommendations 1.1, members are requested to note the contents of this report. Is it noted? Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> item 12, uh, Interim Corporate Performance Report. Can I ask Councillor Arnold to introduce the report, please? Thank you, Leader. Uh, once we went into intervention in 2022, the overall reporting of corporate performance stopped in order to be fully reviewed. But having said that, monitoring at service level performance didn't stop and has continued to be reported within directorates to individual cabinet members and through the relevant scrutiny committees covering those directorates. As we've moved through the Improvement Recovery Board into the Enhanced Recovery Programme, and agreed principal objectives of a project to develop a performance management assurance framework, this will align with the new emerging corporate plan and will be rolled out in 24-25. So this is a, an interim report only so that Cabinet can comment on the current position and then going forward in the new municipal year, we'll start to see the whole uh, performance reporting change to um, look at outcomes and uh, in line with corporate plan and the Enhanced Recovery Board. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Are there any comments or questions from members? No? Okay, so go to recommendations. Recommendations 1.1 to note and comment upon the performance of the key corporate performance indicators. Is this recommendation agreed? Thank you. 1.2, to identify any areas of additional consideration in future corporate performance reports for 23-24. Recommendation agreed? Thank you. Moving on to item 13, annual fee consultation outcome and uplift recommendations on adult social care. Could I ask Councillor Coxall to introduce his report, please? Oh, thank you, Leader. Um, just a report uh, before you tonight, um, Cabinet, is a, it's a delayed paper from last month. There was some slight changes, um, not to the content, but just to the presentation of the report. I'd just like to note as well, before I go into it, the recommendations are listed as to comment. They should actually be to approve rather than to comment on. Um, so a slight mistake there in the paper. Um, just as a, a detailed, so this is the um, report just outlining what the responses were to our annual fee uplift consultation and details actually some of the proposed uplift of eight um, of 8.87 percent and goes into some of the, I can go into some of the rationale behind that. Um, fee setting is often quite a delicate process for the council to do. Um, it does open us up to some legal challenges at times from providers if, if we don't follow due process. Uh, so we, it's a very careful uh, instrument that we've got to be, be mindful of. Um, just as an up, uh, the consultation run from November to December and we took meetings with providers to actually start taking some uh, understand what their issues are and financial challenges are particularly um, they are listed in the report but I would just like to really the big thing obviously Thurrock is fantastic we've got the free port we've got some a lot of job opportunities here in Thurrock it means the job market is very competitive it means that we do providers will find trouble to recruit and there you'll see throughout there is issues with job retention, recruitment, and the slight re overall now reliance on agency staff at times to fill that gap, and that means costs do increase. Um, we also have an inflationary pressure with the increased national living wage, which um, implements a 9.8% uh, price right, uh, uh, pressure on, on providers. Um, so we, it, as we do go into this process of actually setting fees of what we, um, of what we will pay, we have to be mindful of that, of actually, can we get the service for the same price anymore? We just can't. It's not the, the, it's not the same position we were in previously. Uh, as, as I said, we are looking for an uplift of 8.87%. This, of course, I've noted the 9.8% rise in national living wage, but also a, the 6.7% increase in CPI. What we've tried to do is try to balance that and come to it come with the formula of looking at the 70 percent of the contract value will, will be awarded at the 9.8 percent which gives it for direct staffing costs and 30 the remaining 30 percent of the contract value we're looking to implement the 6.7 percent rise that would mean that gives us the overall how we do get to that figure of 8.87 percent 
of course, I'm sure you've got seen through the paper of actually we do detail with some of the part by part of how each part of the people we uh, provided we pay the fees to and some of the pressures they've raised. But I'm of course happy to take questions from Cabinet. Um, thank you, Councillor Cockshall. Um, uh, just a brief comment for me. I think it's absolutely right. We need to have these increases. Um, I agree with everything that you've just said. Is um, any member wishing to comment or question? Councillor Arnold. I just wanted to comment, really, that um, I, I'm in total agreement with this. For me, it, it seems incredibly reasonable. You've only got to think about um, each year how much businesses have to increase their profit margin by in order to maintain and be open. I know that Ian and his team work incredibly hard with our providers and the relationships are really good and the, the care that our residents get in Thurrock is sort of, it, it's up there, I think, um, across all lo local authorities. And I would hate to see us um, do anything that would undermine that in any way. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Any other member wishing to speak? Uh, just Councilor. to come back slightly, thank you, just for the right lead on Councillor Arnold's comments. I think it's, you're totally right. We can't expect the service to be the same. But uh, if we look at in Thurrock, we've got the uh, some of the way the way the amount of people actually pay. We have a, we have a very low amount of people who do fully provide fee for for pay, fee pay for care. We're, we're in a very odd scenario. It means we can't allow ask for subsidised rates to be provided for by by private clients. So we, we've got to be mindful of that and. In, by not actually increasing. We put that our care, the service of care we actually, and the partners we work with are at risk for our residents. Um, so we, we're, we haven't previously done rises in certain areas. Some areas have only had two rises in 10 years. Um, we've just got to be mindful that you can't keep paying the same for the same service. So it's, um, please cabinet, we're happy to endorse. Um, thank you. Any other member wishing to comment before we go to the recommendations? No, so moving on to the recommendations. Uh, recommendation 1.1 that the cabinet approve on the proposed 8.87% increase on the weekly rates paid to Thurrock care home providers for older people. Is the recommendation agreed? Uh, 1.2 that the cabinet agree, sorry, that the cabinet approve the proposed 8.87% increase on the rates paid to CQC regulated domiciliary home care providers. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.3, that the Cabinet agree, sorry, that the Cabinet approve the proposed 8.87% increase on the core fee rates paid to Thurrock care home providers for adults of a working age. Is the recommendation agreed? Yes. That the Cabinet approve the proposed, 1.4, that the Cabinet approve the proposed 8.87% increase on the core fee rates paid to Thurrock supported living providers. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.5, that the Cabinet approve the proposal to negotiate with outer borough providers for the adults of a working age and supported accommodation providers on a case-by-case -case basis and to award up to 8.87% increase to the core fee rates. Is the recommendation agreed? Um, 1.6, that the Cabinet approve the proposed 8.87% increase in the direct payment rates. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you. Uh, 1.7, that the Cabinet approve the proposals to delegate the decision-making for a green care provider fee uplifts to the Executive Director of Adult Housing and Health in consultation with the Portfolio Holder for Health, Adults, Health and Communities. Is the recommendation agreed? agreed. Thank you. Um, item 14, financial penalties for the enforcement of consumer protection legislation relevant to letting agents and landlords. I'm in replace of Charlotte. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, Mike Denis. Could you introduce the report? Is that, sorry, is that right? The officer introduces the report. Yeah, that's what, yeah, we're at Cabinet, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Script says to me. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the report. That's why I was reading that, it's wrong. Um, so it's the financial penalties for enforcement of consumer protection for legislation relevant to letting agents. I mean, I think in a nutshell, this, this, this is essential we prove this. It, legitimate, you know, decent landlords have nothing to, to, to fear um, of this. If they're treating their tenants fairly and, you know, providing them with a decent home, nothing. 
anyone not doing that have got um, everything to be worried by this. And if you look at uh, reasons for recommendations 4.1, if we fail to agree this, the trading standards will not be able to impose financial penalties on unscrupulous landlords and letting agents, um, and that's to the detriment of Thurrock residents. So with that, if there's any comments or questions, happy to take them from any members. No, we'll go straight to the recommendations then. 1.1, Cabinet notes the contents of this report. Noted. 1.2, Cabinet approves the financial penalty policy for enforcement of consumer protection legislation relevant to letting agents and landlords so it can be implemented within our enforcement policy. Is that agreed? agreed. Thank you. Moving on to item 15, that is the uh, South Essex Local Enterprise Partnership Integration. Um, so the background to this, which I'm sure members are aware, the government are um, abolishing LEPs and moving the responsibility back to upper tier authorities, which in um, Essex, that's Essex County, South End and ourselves. Um, this, this paper has been discussed quite in depth at um, um, informal cabinet. Um, I think what's um, um, important about this is the move back to um, giving us the powers to be able to do these things. Um, and the report speaks for itself. Um, when the winding up of this organisation, any funds will then be split equally amongst the three upper tier authorities, which I've been at meetings, we've agreed that, so it just now needs for um, this cabinet to uh, agree the integration plan. Happy to take any questions or comments from members. No? Okay, so moving to the recommendations, 1.1, note and agree the South East Local Enterprise Partnership proposed integration plan. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Moving on to item 16, integrated transport block capital program 2024-25. Can I ask Councillor Maney to introduce his report, please? Thank you, Leader. This report details how the transportation team intends to utilise the 2024-2025 uh, integrated transport block allocation, which is an award from the DFT. This funding will help the council deliver on its local transport priorities over the coming year, with the main policy areas detailed in 3.2 of the report, um, but Appendix A gives a much fuller explanation. Uh, as in other years, Leader, road safety, including around our schools, features as a key priority and we will deliver on our commitment to provide more on-street electric vehicle charging facilities, thus creating uh, more cleaner and greener travel options. In addition, the report sets out the amount received from government in the form of our highways maintenance block allocation and pothole fund. These are funds by which the Council seeks to maintain a highways network, something which proves ever more challenging as a result of increasing traffic and demand on the network. Um, Appendix B details the proposed capital programme for the next financial year. The report recommendations have been approved by Planning, Transport and Regeneration Overview and Scrutiny Committee and Cabinet is now asked to do the same. Um, I'm happy to take any questions on the report. Thank you, Councillor Maney. Are there any questions or comments from members? My only comment is I went out with the um, jet patching um, people that were filling the, the potholes. Brilliant machine. Um, and I'd like to see it more and more on our roads. Um, and I don't think people realise how quickly it can fill potholes. So if, if, if this report brings more of that, I, I welcome it. More of our potholes will be filled. Counts oh, Councillor Main. Indeed, Leader. I think um, you, we have... As you know, we have an exemplary record, I think, when it comes to filling potholes in Thurrock, we have had for a long time. Um, the government has awarded us an increased amount of funding for pothole works, works this year, so I'm confident that we'll be able to do more than ever before, and um, I look forward to uh, seeing more of our roads improve and kept to a higher standard. It is a national problem. We often hear people complain about potholes. It's not unique to Thurrock. I actually think our roads are in a much better condition, actually, than some of our neighbouring local authorities. We'd always like to do more, but with this increased funding, I'm sure we can reach more roads and, and keep them in a serviceable condition. Um, absolutely, and if anyone would like to drive from here into Basildon or um, um, well, basically anywhere in Essex, um, dodge the potholes, because you, you really do need to dodge them. They're big enough to um, lose your car in them. Um, Councillor Cockshaw. 
Thank you, Lida. I admit, I, I've been dodging potholes now, going through Pitsy all the time, so I was doing it this evening. Um, so welcome that part. Just actually, just picking up on electric vehicle charging, actually. Um, just be interested to see how what the timelines are for perhaps as we develop the plan going forward. I'm, I'm, I, I drive a hybrid car, and Thurrock does lack public charging points, so I'd be quite interested to see, actually, quite excited to see some of the rollout of that as it goes forward. Thank you, Councillor Coxwell. Any other member wishing to comment? Councillor Maney. Just very briefly on that point, um, it, it is one I think of uh, the, there's lots of good things in the, in the uh, programme this year, but I think, you know, the, our commitment to providing the suite of uh, EV charging points is, is one that I'm particularly proud of. You know, you've, you, you, you've got to, you can talk the talk, but you've got to walk the walk. If we want to be a uh, cleaner, greener borough, we have to, you know, lead the way on these kind of things. I'm very happy to say I've uh, approved only in the last few days uh, some delegated decisions to um, roll out our first electric vehicle charging points. I'm very excited about that. Residents should, all going well, soon have access to uh, mo many more public charging points in the borough. Um, thank you, Councillor Maney. And that will certainly encourage people to um, buy electric, I think, if they're able to charge their vehicle. Any other comments from, from people? No, from members? Okay, we move to the recommendations. Recommendation 1.1, that Cabinet approve the 2024-25 Integrated Transport Block Capital Programme allocations and proposed prioritisation for the agreed policy areas of the road safety engineering, safer, road, safer routes to school, area intervention program and electric vehicle charging program as deta detailed in Appendix A. Is this, um, is this recommendation agreed? 1.2, that Cabinet approve 2024-25 highway maintenance block allocation and the pothole fund program as detailed in Appendix B. Is this recommendation agreed? 1.3, that Cabinet approve that delegated authority will be given to the Interim Executive Director of Place in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Regeneration and Highways to make any required changes to the ITB programme and the maintenance programme for 2024-25 within the overall programme budget as well as other government funding allocations that may arise within the year to ensure delivery of the programme and to ensure the efficient expenditure of the grant allocations. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you. So moving on to item seven, item 17, preferred software reseller, uh, new procurement. Um, I just need to remind members that item, uh, so this report has one exempt um, appendices and therefore if members would like to discuss this, we will need to move into private session. Can I ask Councillor Arnold to introduce the report please? Thank you, Lisa. Um, this is quite a straightforward report asking to go to an open tendering process for the procurement of software licenses via a recognised framework rather than a general open tender. We have over 20 software licenses across the council renewing on an annual basis for all at varying times during the year. So this tender process will allow for hopefully some competitive pricing as well as centralising the administration of the licences. We're currently spending around £300,000 a year on licences and we'll be expecting a centralised cost of around £1.2 million for the four years. So there may not be a cost reduction within amalgamating and centralising those licences, but it will make the administration and transparency of the costs a lot easier and quicker internally for efficiencies. Thank you, Councillor Arnold. Any, any member wishing to ask a question or comment? Councillor Cockshaw. Oh, thank you, Leader. No, I, think, I think this is an eminently sensible thing to do. I know we've had conversations previously in ICB. Um, where I noted how long it took me for some simple queries. But I think it's a relatively simple thing we need to look at and explore. If we can triage residents in, in this way, it actually makes their, their life easier. They get their, their queries solved much quicker. We, it means council staff are freed up to actually start tackling other issues that we can address. And uh, in reality, it's just a, it's the modern thing we should be able to, we should be able to provide this service. Um, so it's eminently simple. If we want to get this done quickly, adopting the framework method is more than sensible, I think. Yeah, thank you. I, I quite agree. Any other member wishing to speak? 
notes if you go straight to recommendations. Uh, recommendation 1.1, agree and support the proposal to conduct a procurement exercise for the commissioning of the contract referred to below. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.2, approve delegation to the Executive Director of Corporate Services in consultation with the portfolio holder and Section 151 officer to award the contract following completion of the procurement process. Is the recommendation agreed? Um, moving on to item 18, um, Tilbury Youth Zone. Councillor Mayne, can I ask you to introduce your report, please? Thank you, Leader. Uh, this report provides an update on the delivery of the Youth Zone project, which will provide a state-of-the-art facility for young people located at Anchorfield in Tilbury. This paper follows previous Cabinet reports and has also been considered recently at Scrutiny Committee. The development of the Youth Zone is being promoted by the Tilbury Town Fund Board and will be delivered by the organisation Onside. As you know, Leader, Onside is a national charity which has experience and expertise in providing such youth facilities, and we should have every confidence in their ability to do the same here in Thurrock. It should be noted that support for this project has also come from other partner organisations in the borough, including the Freeport and DP World, which I'm sure you will agree, Leader, is a sign of how significant this project is for Thurrock. The Youth Zone has the potential to provide a vital range of services and improved outcomes for young people in Thurrock, and it's essential that the project is properly managed and delivered. Cabinet is asked to note the progress to date on the delivery of the Youth Zone, and I'm sure colleagues will join with me in expressing their support for this exciting project. At the same time, we should place on record our thanks to all partners involved, including our local MP, Dame Jackie Doyle Price. Cabinet is also asked to approve the heads of terms for the Thurrock Youth Zone lease as set out in 3.39 of the report and to delegate authority to appropriate officers to agree the terms of the development agreement, capital funding agreement and the lease. Um, I'm happy to move the recommendations and take any questions, Leader. Um, thank you, Councillor Mayne. Before I bring in Councillor Carter, I mean, I'm on record as saying that this is such an exciting and potentially transformational project to, to an area, um, well, the whole borough. It won't just be for Tilbury, it will be for the whole borough. Um, I agree entirely with what you said, thanks to all of the parties, you know, Freeport, um, Onside, um, Dame Jackie Doyle Price for supporting this and making sure this happens. I was this week at a, a Towns Board meeting and it was agreed there, we need to get spades in the ground and get this project working. And they are actively working towards achieving that. So are the, the youth zone organisations. They're keen to get their project up and running. They're out fundraising to make sure that they get the funds that they need to be able to, to run the programme. Um, and um, yeah, it's right, we, we fully support this project. Councillor Carter. Thank you, Leader. I, thank you for your report, Councillor Maney. I, I just want, uh, I'm not going to ask a question. I did just want to comment uh, uh, much what the Leader just said about how fantastic this site is. And in the very next agenda item, we are looking at, um, at a new um, uh, social, emotional, mental health centre airbase in Tilbury. And I've just gave the news earlier that Olive Academy has, will be having a new free school. These are all sites very near to one site, to the on-site site, and will benefit immensely from this site. So I, I just really want to put on on record just how great this is for the local area. Uh, sorry, no no question, Councillor Maney. Just uh, wanted to give this my full support. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Any other member wishing to? Yeah, Councillor Arnold. Uh, I, I just wanted to echo your excitement and how excited I am. I'm, I was lucky enough to go and visit the site. I've seen the one in um, Croydon and the one in is it Dagenham? Barking and Dagenham that we went to. They are such a far cry from the um, youth centre of my day with the colouring book and a few crowns at the back of the hall. Yeah, they're amazing. The rock climbing wall, the, the team sports that they inspire there, the beauticians, the music room, the um, study timetables they've got. Um, I know I, I listened in on planning and I know there were concerns around antisocial behaviour and it increasing in Tilbury because of the youth centre. For me, it, it can't do anything other than do the opposite to that. So I'm really looking forward to this coming through. Thank you, absolutely. Any other member wishing to speak? 
go straight to the recommendations. Recommendation 1.1, Cabinet notes progress on the delivery of the youth zone project. Is that recommendation agreed? Yes. Thank you. 1.2, Cabinet approves the proposed heads of terms for the Thurrock Youth Zone Lease set out in paragraph 3.39 and delegates authority to the Chief Finance Officer in consultation with the Executive Director of Law and Governance to agree the terms of development agreement, capital funding agreement and lease. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you very much. Moving on to item 19, Schools Capital Programme Update 2023-24. Councillor Carter, could I ask you to introduce your report, please? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Leader. Um, the School Capital Programme uh, has been through scrutiny. It went through uh, Children's ONS yesterday and uh, it received unanimous support there. Uh, we seek to... Um, there, there's t uh, the first two recommendations as a choice, we can either approve 1.1 or 1.2. Uh, I'm suggesting and ONS also suggested uh, to go for the uh, go for the new build, which is 1.2 of 4.75 million, as this will add longevity to the school and provide a better school and be funded by the DfE. Uh, we are also seeking to approve a 1 million budget for alteration works in Northview Avenue, Tilbury. This um, will be a social, emotional, mental health base, and uh, will actually uh, be run by Olive as well, who we just heard have um, just uh, been approved a free school. So they will uh, be increasing places in that time ready for that. Uh, I think this uh, report is uh, all positive and uh, ONS were very um, grateful to receive it and very supportive. Um, thank you, Councillor Carter. Sorry, could, just to clarify, so are you saying that the ONS recommended the 1.2 um, be approved? Because that to me appears to be the, the best option. Uh, yes, and it is the, indeed the recommended um, uh, recommendation in, in this report uh, and I was just uh, wanted to give cabinet clarity that ONS took the same view. Thank you. Um, any other member wishing to speak? No, so we go straight to the recommendation. I'm assuming I've just renumbered that to, yeah, to 1.1. Yeah. So recommendation 1.1 to approve the budget of 4.75 million budget for a new build works to allow the expansion of Tilbury Pioneer Academy to be funded from the school's basic needs capital funding 2023-24. Is that recommendation agreed? Uh, 1.2, to approve the commencement of the procurement process in accordance with the council and UK procurement procedure to vary the appointment and scope of works to be undertaken by the multidisciplinary design team for the Tilbury Pioneer Expansion Project and appoint the principal contractors to take forward the proposed desired scheme. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.3, that authority be delegated to the Director of Children's <coughs> Services in consultation with the education portfolio holder to enter in, into any form of agreement following the award of the agreement arising from 1.2, 1.1, shall we, yeah. Arising from 1.1 above in the compliance with the Council's procurement regulations, is the recommendation agreed? 1.4, to approve a, a £1 million budget for the alteration works in the Northview Avenue, Tilbury, to allow for a secondary SEMH provision to be funded from SEN Capital gov Government Grant 2023-24. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.5, note the recent in-year accommodation works that have commenced and completed in order to ensure sufficient pupil places for 2023-2024. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you. So moving on to item 20, home to school travel transport policy. Councillor Carter, could I ask you to introduce your report, please? Thank you, Leader. Um, the report before you, Cabinet today, uh, seeks to um, approve the new strategy uh, for um, home to school transport uh, for the ages between 5 and 16. Um, uh, as uh, previously, uh, this had required people to list a number of their, uh, apply to a number of their closest schools. Now that has been reduced to one uh, following a, uh, this has all followed a consultation. You can see the results of which in your pack today. We are also seeking to uh, um, agree to implement a weekly parent contribution towards um, special educational needs post-16 travel assistant each year. Um, 
I think there's a slight typo in 1.2, as it, it's a bit confusing. It says um, assistance each year of 2369. This is reduced to 1185 for low income families. That is the weekly charge, but I don't think it's very clear in the recommendation. Uh, so I apologise for that. Um, this also went to ONS um, last night, and uh, it was actually voted down by um, ONS, the, um, the, the 1.2. This, however, I have since um, received advice from Democratic Services to have been incorrect as a parent governor representative was there, and they voted to approve recommendation 1.2 along with two members. This, they were then told by the vice chair that they did not have the right to vote. This was incorrect, and they did have the right to vote. This would have led the vote into three votes for and three votes against, with the chair um, having a casting vote, and the chair did vote in favour of recommendation 1.2. So I think it's fair to say that this would have been agreed by um, Children's ONS if correct process was followed. And I, I think we need to make a point that there, there should have been proper um, advice for members in that situation where a, a vice chair has, has stood up and said, you can't vote, and this was incorrect information. Democratic services were there, and we need to be a, a, a bit stronger on that to know that correct process is followed in council. But I can say a majority of members who were, had the right to vote, including co-opted members, uh, with the chair's casting vote, um, would recommend uh, introducing uh, recommendation 1.2. So I just wanted to give some clarity of children's ONS last night. Okay, thank you, Councillor Carter. I'm sure you'll be taking that up with the monitoring officer who I, I will. Was, yeah. was listening intently to, to what you just said. Um, just, just one comment from me on this. I think, uh, am I right in thinking that um, with the changes to the post-16 um, way of travelling, um, many of our schools are actually um, helping um, post-16 uh, pupils to be able to travel to and from school, give them some guidance and some help, which is basically giving them the ability of when they leave school to be able to travel to and from college or work or wherever it might be. Yes, travel training or um, uh, training towards independent travel has long been something. I know you yourself have raised this on a number of occasions. It is something the council will always strive to do. If you look at the consultation provided in this pack, it's very clear that none of the family's can, um, children can travel independently. That doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that they they certain ones won't be able to. There are some that will never be able to. And, but the ones who we can promote that independent travel with, we should absolutely, absolutely be doing that because it is within both their interest, the local authorities' interest, to have as much independence promoted as possible. I also um, didn't say in my introduction to this is um, that the charges we are, are bringing in are completely in line with Essex. This is because um, some of our pupils go to school in Essex and some Essex pupils come in here, so they will both, both have the exact same charge. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Any other member wishing? Councillor Snell. Thank you, Leader, and uh, thank you, Councillor Carter. It's interesting to hear you say there was some pushback um, at ONS on 1.2, um, and of course that is the um, committee's prerogative to do that, but I'll be interested to hear if they had any alternative proposals to 1.2, or was it just a flat, we don't like it kind of scenario? Well, um, I think if they had alternatives, they had two corporate ONSs to bring this up on. This was also part of the budget, um, which was passed. And uh, by abstaining to it, they had agreed to let this go through. The, the ones who had voted against were all part of the, the people who abstained. Um, so uh, as for a recommendation, the vice chair did say we should do a slider system so that if you look at recommendation 1.2, there is a contribution, uh, it, it will be reduced for low income families. What the vice chair was recommending was to see if that could be slided up so the higher income families could pay a lot more so low income families didn't have to pay at all. I've since gone away and talked and this this isn't viable. There are bursaries out there if people need that. There is, um, there is PIP available as well, um, but that, that was a recommendation, but it's not one that we, I, I can really take with a high degree of this could happen. Yeah, no, that, that's interesting. Thank you, Councillor Carter. I, I think um, it's, 
ONS should bear in mind when we're having these conversations that once this has already been through Cabinet and it's already been approved at Council as well, is that actually I mean, it, it's just political grandstanding from that point on. And, uh, and I think we need to cut that out. Thoroughly. It's caused too many problems going, uh, in the past and it's only going to cause problems going forward if we continue in this vein. Uh, I agree with your sentiments completely there, Councillor Snell. There was a lot of issues with house groups and it was provided last night of uh, probably some of the worst I've seen in this council. And uh, I will be bringing all these up with the new monitoring officer and I'm sorry to give him so much work so early on. <laughs> and welcome to the team. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Carter. Any other member wishing to, to comment? Okay, we'll go straight to the recommendations. The proposed recommendations below to commence from the 1st of April 2024 for the start of the academic year 2024-25 for new families applying for travel assistance. 1.1, Cabinet agrees and adopts the new individual send and mainstream home to school travel and transport policies 2024-2025 for statutory school age pupils aged 5 to 16. Is this recommendation agreed? 1.2. Cabinet agrees to implement a weekly parent contribution towards SEND post-16 travel assistance. Should that be each? Is that each? That's each week, isn't it? It's weekly. Each week of 23.69, this is reduced to £11.85 for low-income families. Is this recommendation agreed? Thank you. Moving on to item 21, um, Teviot's Avenue numbers 158 to 228, demolition and redevelopment. Um, again, as Councillor Johnson's unable to be here this evening, could I ask Evelina to introduce this report, please? Thank you, Leader. Um, this uh, report advises Cabinet on the proposed redevelopment of numbers 158 to 228 events on Lake Teviot Avenue, six approvals related to the re redevelopment of the dwellings. Um, it proposes a site area for that redevelopment and a six-year authority uh, for us to start uh, vacating of the dwellings and decanting residents and making, um, uh, whilst doing so, making appropriate uh, payments to the residents that will be displaced. We, uh, in the report, identify the structural defects and re repair liability for those flats. And um, the report also describes options appraisal that concluded that demolition of the existing buildings and development of an increased number of homes on the site is the option presenting uh, the greatest value for money for this particular project. Um, the proposed route for the council is to deliver the scheme itself and to progress this by procuring main contractor. We're also seeking approval to procure a contractor to demolish the existing dwellings and constructing the new homes. Um, you will note that currently we've got 38 um, housing revenue uh, flats that are um, housing our social tenants and leaseholders there. They are precast, pre reinforced concrete of the coal niche type, so we refer to them as the non-traditional uh, housing stock. And we are proposing to increase the overall uh, number of dwellings, and that's with 48 new dwellings, um, compromising of 30 houses and 18 flats. And this, um, all of the detail is in appendix uh, B there for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any members wishing to comment or question? I think it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? We're going to improve these the homes for people, knock down something that's not appropriate and rebuild decent homes. I don't think anyone would, would object to that. So we'll move to the recommendations. Cabinet is asked to approve the following. 1.1, the proposed site area for the redevelopment of numbers of 158 to 228 Teviot Avenue. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.2, commencement of decanting residents from these properties and the treatment of these residents in line with the council's allocation policy. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.3, payment, payment of home loss and disturbance payments as appropriate. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.4, commencement of negotiations with leaseholders for the repurchase of properties and completing the purchases with such actions delegated to the Executive Director of Adults, Housing and Health in consultation with the Chief Financial Officer and the Portfolio Holder for Finance, Human Resources and Payroll and the Portfolio Holder for Children's Services and Housing. Is the recommendation agreed? 
1.5, subject to further Cabinet approval, the use of compulsory purchase powers under Section 226, the Town and Country Planning Act 1990, should this be necessary. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.6, service of a demolition notice under Section 138B and Schedule 5A of the Housing Act 1985 that will confirm the Council's intention to demolish the buildings and sus suspend the obligation on the Council to complete right-to-buy applications on the dwellings within the agreed site boundary. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.7, approval to negotiate and settle any statutory compensation claims made by residents as a result of the service of initial demolition notice with such actions delegated as at paragraph 1.4 above. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.8, approval to establish a budget of £1 million to meet the costs of purchase of leasehold interest. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.9, subject to government agreement to borrowing approval is given to launch a procurement process to obtain a main contractor for the detailed design and construction and to delegate to the Corporate Director of Adult, Adults Housing and Health in consultation with the Leader, Cabinet Member for Children's Services and Housing, Commissioners and Section 151 Officer the decision to make the necessary contract awards. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you very much. Moving on to item 22, Black Shops Redevelopment. Um, again, uh, there are two items of appendices which uh, are an exempt. Should any member wish to discuss these, we will need to go into closed session. Can I ask Evelina to introduce this report, please? Thank you so much, Dita. And I will just start by saying that uh, Councillor Johnson would absolutely love to be here to introduce this particular report because it... Um, has taken a lot of officer and, and councillor time to actually get it to the point. Uh, so I'm happy to, to be here, but um, he's got it. Uh, so moving swiftly on. So the report updates you on the development of the business case for black shots. Um, this is something that we outlined in the previous cabinet report in March last year. So uh, you have now got the full business case in front of you. It confirms that the self-delivered uh, scheme through HRA, Housing Revenue Account, delivering 100% affordable housing for uh, 258 homes is a viable option and is the preferred option. And it is asking um, you to um, go to the next stage, which is procuring a main contractor who will in turn obtain planning permission and construct the scheme. It also updates you on the progress in terms of clearing the blocks, so the progress with decanting of the residents and relocation of the tennis courts and the fields in trust land. I see that's something very close to Councillor Retzel's um, heart and um, ties in with the, um, uh, original, um, with the initial questions. Uh, we also are reminding in the report um, uh, yourself of the reasons why we're we looking to redevelop this particular 160 um, eight homes currently, as you know, they have got significant problems, are subject to complaints and are not economically repairable um, in, this, um, in their current state. Uh, we are um, outlining indif indicative design that has been consulted widely with residents um, that followed the programme of engagement and that programme of engagement continues on site. Um, the business case itself, um, takes you through a range of delivery options and, um, as I mentioned in, in the headline, concludes the self-delivery as the best option uh, for you. You have got a good pre there of the various market interest uh, risks and cost risks and all of that is, is there for your perusal. Um, in terms of getting planning permission, as I mentioned, we are looking to um, make the uh, main contractor um, uh, 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 responsible for obtaining that. So our next step is to recommend to be procuring a contractor to do so, to develop planning for uh, application and uh, lead to submission. Um, this will um, ensure buildability for the contractor, opportunity for efficient design, economy of scale and use of contractor's supply chain together with the ability to pass in some, some degree of cost risks. Um, we are also asking uh, and giving you the uh, uh, approximate um, surpluses that 
based on our current assumptions, the, um, the, 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 the case might bring, and these are noted as um, 3.5 and 7.6 million, respectively, on the two sites, um, uh, north and south. Um, we have absolutely modelled a number of uh, sort of sensitivities there, and uh, we, we uh, are confident that we can accommodate those and that the project remains um, overall viable. Um, there is obviously, there are further challenges, um, as, as Councillor Retzel also alluded to, so we absolutely need to make case at planning committee for the special, for the very special circumstances allowing us to build on the green belt uh, in the green sort of uh, scheme of things. We, we are confident we can do that, but it is not without its, its risks. And um, ongoing negotiations on the fields in trust land and the telecommunication masts that are placed on those um, buildings, as well as um, obviously getting on and completing clearance of the blocks. And, um, and uh, the, the, the last uh, but very important bit, which is the confirmation of the actual permission to borrow to develop. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Evelina. Um, before I go to the members, I know that um, Councillor Redsell has been campaigning on this for, I think I was told, 15 <coughs> years. So um, before I go to members, I think it's only right that I, I should ask um, Councillor Redsell if she has got any comments that she'd like to make. Thank you, Leader. Much appreciated. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've, I've got to give praise where, you know, housing has done really, really well. Um, I'm not sure there's things that I know that I probably can't say on this at the moment, things that I know that um, are not for general public at the moment. But um, I think we've moved a lot quicker than we thought we were going to move. And it, it's been well. It, as I say, the only bit is the, is the green belt. And if Evelyn is going to look into that Ron Evans field, I think we could... A lot of it could be a lot more viable. You know, we could do better things than we're doing. As Evelina said about the parking, a hundred more houses there. We were told that some of the houses, I think Councillor Maney picked it out when we was at a meeting over the Civic, that there, some of the properties have got no parking spaces. And we asked the people that were there and they said, oh, they can park on the road. But I said, have you been around the road? Because there is no parking on e-roads at the moment because everybody's on the grass verge and on the pavement so they won't if you're thinking of a hundred more properties that's 200 more cars so it, it's not viable you know i have no trouble with the north site the north site is big enough to take whatever development is there because there's enough space but i think we could we could get it better you know and that's what i hope um obviously when it goes to planning that's where we can fight it better i think or hopefully I was hoping we could do something before it goes to planning. So thank you for letting me speak, Leader. Cheers. You're welcome. And congratulations on um, um, a, a long campaign that you, 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 have, you have done well. And I think you should be pleased with, whilst you might not be happy with some of the bits, but you should be happy with the, with the outcome of these new houses that are going to be built. Um, it's a credit to you. Uh, is um, any other member wishing to speak? Councillor Maney. Of course, obviously... Ward colleague, so congratulations to you as well. Thank you, Chair. Um, just, I mean, we have to welcome this because, you know, it, it is uh, a step in the right direction. And for as long as Joe and I have been councillors, we've, we've been determined to uh, campaign for these towers to be brought down for all the reasons we've, we've heard in the past. It is tempered by the issue of the Green Belt. Um, we refer to it as green belt. It's a bit more than that to me. It's um, you know this. I'm, I'm an unapologetic royalist. This isn't just green belt. It's King George V playing field. It's a memorial playing field at that. And there is something deeply unpalatable about building on part of it. But as we've already said, this is all for the for the planning stage. We've had to support it up until this point because you know we we do want to see this move forward. But we've always hoped that we could you know, come to some agreement on that piece of uh, playing field, uh, which is within within the, ad the identified um, build site. My question for Evelina is, in relation to, I'm going to call it the land swap, the, the um, area of, of field that's currently part of the Chapel Farm lease, I think, that um, you've identified as replacement playing field. Bear in mind that's in our ownership. I just wonder why you haven't decided to use that for some of the development and leave 
King George playing field alone. I mean, it's right alongside the estate. It's in very close proximity to the towers as it is. It has uh, all, all the access roads are there. I just wondered, did you give any consideration to using that for some of the development and you know leaving the playing field um, as it's as it currently is? So the, the short answer is yes, we have considered that uh, piece of land. Uh, we have made inquiries and extensive inquiries and we've sort of reported back to to the steering group on that. Uh, and sorry, what, what is the reason for that? Not, cause I think it's in it's in the identified in the local plan. Why can't that be used uh, for as part of the development as opposed to the area of uh, King George V playing field? So I think the, the overall response on that, the conclusion was that it is uh, not the most appropriate. It is subject to ongoing um, conversation in regards to the Lower Thames crossing. And um, it is uh, um, therefore not um, the appropriate land to be um, suggesting a, a development at. Um, thank you. Any other member wishing to? Councillor Arnold. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not averse to this at all. I, I, this is quite exciting. It, it's been a long time coming. It's completely necessary. If, if my memory serves me correctly, there is a couple of um, own homeowners within the blocks. Not everyone is a tenant. And so I, I just wondered, I, I didn't really see in the report how we will be supporting them going forward along with the tenants as we start to progress this. Up until now, it feels like we were just talking, but now we're actually doing something. How will we be supporting them? Uh, that's right. So we have um, uh, got uh, a number of leaseholders there. And um, we, uh, you might recall, um, we've, uh, in the body of the report, we talk about the independent tenant and leaseholder advisor that we've got working on this. Um, so we have um, uh, absolutely spoken to every single one of the leaseholders. We have spoken also to their tenants because quite a number of them are actually non-resident leaseholders. And we are uh, 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 sort of supporting both the leaseholders that are there and the tenants to sort of find uh, uh, alternative accommodation. In the report itself, we are updating you <coughs> at uh, paragraph 3.58 that we have um, agreed uh, to repurchase 11 of the leaseholder flats and 10 of those are within sort of legal processes, uh, so in conveyancing at the moment. So, uh, you know, all being well, um, one of them is, is, is due to complete in the next few weeks. So we are actually very, um, very hopeful this is going um, well for us. Uh, and the, the, the last one, the, the one that it isn't yet in, in conveyancing, we have got a pretty much a one on one hotline with uh, the gentleman who is the um, appointed e independent leasehold and uh, tenant advisor on this, on this uh, matter. And um, he's actually to find alternative property to buy because that particular leaseholder would like to remain a homeowner in the next place. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Carter. Not a question, but um, I want to firstly uh, congratulate my colleagues on a, a bit from Little Pratt Black Shots on a very long campaign, and we've, uh, we've all heard lots about it from them over the years. Uh, I just want to say I fully welcome this. This is a great example of how we're seeking to improve our housing stock, and uh, where, where some housing stock is seen to not be appropriate for our residents, then um, we, are, we are rebuilding, we are starting afresh, and I think it's fantastic, and I want to fully welcome the report. Um, thank you. Any other member wishing to speak? No, so we go to the recommendations. So, recommendations 1.1. Cabinet agrees that the design developed to date based on the consultation and public engagement as a basis for the procure, procuring the next stage of the redevelopment. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.2, Cabinet agrees to progress to the next steps as recommended below based on the business case developed by the Council's advisors, Avison Young. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.3, the Council progresses the Black Shots project following the self-delivery approach. Is the recommendation agreed? 
1.4, subject to the government agreement to borrowing, approval is given to launch a procurement process to obtain a main contractor for further design and construction and to delegate to the corporate director for adults, housing and health in consultation with the leader, cabinet member for children's services and housing, commissioners and the section 151 officer, the decision to make the necessary contract awards. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.5, in accordance with the business case model, agree to establish a budget of 70.385 million for the projected estimated cost of the works to be funded by the HRA borrowing in accordance with the proposed HRA business and capital programme, subject to DLUC approval. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.6, approve the procurement of the relevant advisors for the council's cl client technical team and delegate to the Corporate Director of Adults, Housing and Health in consultation with the Cabinet Member for Children's Services and Housing the award of the contracts. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.7. Note that the budget of 700,000 has been identified from within the existing Housing Revenue Account General Reserves to support the provision of the necessary advisors which will be accommodated within the existing HRA balance or funded from the reserves should it prove necessary. Is the recommendation agreed? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item 23, total security solution contract procurement. Could I just remind members that there are three exempt appendices, that's appendix two, four and five, and should you wish to discuss it, we'll need to go into private session. Can I ask Evelina to present the report, please? Thank you, Leader. Um, this report seeks your approval to start, start a tender exercise for integrated total security solutions contract uh, looking to combine concierge, starting guarding, access control and in intruder alarms, response call-outs. Uh, procurement exercise will allow for one contract model to be in place of, uh, instead of multiple security contractors across the council. We are looking to um, start the procurement via a compliant framework agreement. Uh, the report also reviews the options considered and continue to delivering security services in a more effective and efficient way across the council and proposes all-encompassing security contract. will have a term of three years with an option to extend for the two years, making it a total of potential five-year contract. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any member wishing to comment or question on the report? I think it's straightforward. No? Okay, so going to uh, recommendations. Recommendations 1.1 to approve the procurement of an integrated total security solution contract across council departments. Is the recommendation agreed? To delegate authority to corporate director in consultation with the portfolio holder to award this contract following the PCR uh, 2015 and the Council's contract procedure rules. Is the recommendation agreed? Yes. Thank you. 1.3, to note that the new security contract will have a term of three years with an option to extend for a further two years, making the total contract term five years. Is the recommendation agreed? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to item 24, it's a Lower Thames Crossing update. Um, members have got the report before them. Just a couple of comments from me. I just want to reiterate the fact that the Council is still opposed to the Lower Thames Crossing route as it is at the moment. We do need an additional route, but not in that um, particular area. There is um, um, talk of a, an additional consultation, um, and we have been asked um, if we would... Um, comment. At the moment, we don't know what that consultation would take the form of. We don't know how it would be paid for. So therefore, until the Secretary of State actually makes that decision that there should be an additional consultation, it's a little bit difficult for us to, to comment on. What I would remind is that the Secretary of State now has to make a decision to either um, scrap the project or to agree to it in the form that it's being proposed. Can I make a plea? If he is going to agree to it in the form that it is that we do oppose, the mitigation needs to be stepped up. Thurrock needs to be given more mitigation for a road that's going to slice through the, the middle of this, this borough. A road that we need, but not in that position. 
So if he's listening and watching tonight, um, can you please make sure that the mitigation is improved and we get far, far more mitigation than what's being offered at the moment? Any other member wishing to comment or um, question? No? Okay, we'll go to recommendations. So recommendation 1.1, that Cabinet notes the significant work undertaken by the officers and consultants acting on behalf of the Council to present the Council's position at the Lower Thames Crossing Development Control Order examination between June and December 2023. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.2, that Cabinet endorses the Council's continued position that the proposals submitted by National Highways do not meet their own objectives to the crossing and that they should be recommended for refusal, unless approval is conditional on a range of improvements and mitigation measures set out by the Council in its submission to the examination. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you. Moving on to item 25, Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman Report. That's for me to introduce. So I'm going to ask the um, Chief Executive to, to introduce this report. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, th this report brings to the attention of, uh, of members an adverse uh, report that we've received from the Local Government Ombudsman with respect to a historic case um, uh, that's outlined in the report. A member of the public who was entitled to assisted support with... Um, uh, with their bin emptying had repeatedly requested support and had been repeatedly not receiving that that support um, this uh, went through the formal complaints process and then ultimately onto the ombudsman who's reported as such uh, making an award to the um, uh, to the resident and for which we have apologized this took place as it sets out in the report back in um, in uh, 2020 between 2020 and 2022 uh, and as I said has been through the, the system we're, we're required to um, to publicize this fact and the outcome of the of the LGO's findings uh, which we've summarized for you in in the detail of the report um thank you uh, any member wishing to comment or question on this I think the report speaks for itself, doesn't it? That we have been found guilty of it and we have apologised and um, are putting measures in place to, to, to try and make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. Um, and I'm, I'm just checking, so it is probably, we have apologised to the resident, um, I believe. Um, I'm getting a, a nod from... Um yes, lady, we have. Thank you. Um, so if there's no other comments or questions, move to the recommendations. The recommendation is 1.1, that the final report by the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman should be considered at its full council, full council cabinet or other appropriately delegated committee of elected members. Is the recommendation agreed? agreed. Thank you. Um, item 26, quarter three forecast revenue and capital <coughs> outturn 23-24. Can I ask Councillor Snell to introduce his report, please? Thank you, Leader. Uh, the majority of this was um, explained by myself at uh, Fall Council a few weeks ago, so we're not going to go through every single bit on here. Um, basically, the highlights are the change in the capitalisation direction requirement, which went from 180.2 million to 235 million. Uh, that's almost exclusively down to the, the, the reworking of the MRP, which we, we heard about at Fall Council. Um, there is um, an overspend forecast of 2.014 million on the um, directorate position. Um, it, it's heading in the right direction, it's going down yet again, but it's still an overspend. Uh, and we, we really need to um, put our socks up on that one and improve that for future quarters. Um, but that is uh, only an equivalent of 1.2% overspend. So it's, it's small, but it doesn't, it's, we've got to get rid of it basically. Um, 
Just a word on the HRA. The HRA is forecast to, to achieve an operating surplus for the year. Um, dedicated schools budget is also operating at a surplus. Uh, public health also. Uh, capital fund, we, we again at full council, we, we spoke about the slippage on the general fund and the capital programme as well. Uh, so they, they're something to be uh, aware of. Uh, and of course, it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that uh, accounts for 2021, uh, 2020, 21, 21, 22, and 22, 23 are still open and subject to uh, revision, and that could affect the figures going forward. But as I say, most of this was reported at full council, but I'm happy to take questions. Um, thank you, Councillor Snell. I think you're, you're right. M most of this has been um, debated and discussed at full council with members being able to do, uh, members being able to contribute, but also it should be noted that the accounts, I think we're in no no, no different a position to almost every council up and down the country. There are accounts outstanding, um, and, they, and that needs to be resolved, as we're being told time and time again. Um, is there any other member wishing to um, comment or question? No? Okay, so we'll move to the uh, recommendations, and that is uh, recommendations 1.1. That Cabinet note the general fund overall forecast outturn position for quarter three is reliant upon the capitalisation direction of 235 million for 2023-24. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.2, that Cabinet approve the proposals based on the current projections, the contribution to the Treasury equalisation reserve of 9.6 million and the transformation reserve of 9 million, with final figures to be confirmed as part of the final outturn position. Is the recommendation agreed? that Cabinet note the position set out in respect of the HRA Section 7, DSG Section 8 and the Public Health Section 9, which projects to deliver the budget within the existing funding envelopes. Is the recommendation agreed? 1.4, that Cabinet note and comment on the capital programme set out in Section 10, the current projected general fund slippage of 4.7 million, the HRA slippage of 1.8 million, is the recommendation agreed? 1.5, that Cabinet comment on the capital budget additions set out in Section 10. Is the recommendation agreed? Thank you very much. Um, so um, that concludes the uh, business of this meeting. So therefore, I now declare this meeting closed at 22 minutes past eight. Thank you, everyone.